Hi, welcome to The Money Compass. The show that will guide you through the world of money and finance. With me, Emma Knights. And me, Lucas Spiro. Exploring investments, retirement, taxes and protection. And helping you navigate your way to financial success. So in today's episode, we have a very special guest with us, Ralph, who is one of our senior advisors here at Face to Face Finance. And he's going to tell us a little bit about some questions that he's commonly asked, particularly by newer clients. So, Ralph. Take it away. Thanks for that uh, fine introduction, Lucas. And uh, I particularly like the fact that I'm a senior advisor um, or another word for old. (laughs) Generally speaking, the questions are as follows. Can I lose all my money? And like you said, that's that's really uh, what happens when we have uh, new clients. Can I lose all my money, especially if the the money is coming from cash, a, a, a bank account? I always ask them this. I say to them, and I pretty much know the answer, would you be unhappy if you lost all your money? And they say, yes, we would be very unhappy. And I said, yeah, I said, would you phone us up? And they said, yes, definitely. We would phone you up. I said, well, your phone wouldn't be working. I said, because that company would be extinct. I said, and you wouldn't get in your car because you wouldn't be able to fill it up with petrol because that company would be extinct. Because with traditional investments, they're invested in places you can see things that you know. You may not know all the companies. They'd also be invested in governments because, again, with most investment, they have what's called asset allocation which is a posh word for saying your money spread around. So you would have some in shares and you would have some with governments. People who want to borrow money, they're not like us. When we want to borrow money, we go and beg the bank manager or for please give me some money so I can buy this house. But when you're a major company, you don't do that. You go and borrow money from uh, what we call the markets. So that's really, can someone lose all their money? The answer is no, because it would be the end of civilization. And my last part and thought with them is you'd only be interested in how many potatoes you could grow in your back garden if if you lost your money, because everyone would have lost theirs as well. In a nutshell, it's highly unlikely that you are going to lose all of your money in, in an investment. It's impossible. Yeah. So the other one is Ralph. And they've noticed that I have grey hair. And they say to me, what happens when you retire? And I sort of point across to Emma and go, well, that is my succession plan. And I think it's important that advisors have succession plans. I know with you, Lucas, you are a succession plan, although we actually call you Lucas. It's important that the clients can see what the future is because it we actually pick up clients um, every year from people who have pretty much been dumped because their advisor has 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 left, retired, whatever, and and there's no forethought about what's going to happen when when they when they retire. And I do feel sorry for the clients because we 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 have long term relationships with them. I agree with that. I mean, I'm sure Emma does. For us, as going out with yourself and Bob and meeting these clients nice and early before, you know, as you say, eventually when you guys do retire, it helps us establish that relationship. And it's not just, a, you know, as if we've been dumped on someone. So, you know, from our point of view, that, that that's brilliant, I think. And I'm sure Emma would agree with that. Definitely. I, I do always like to bring a smile to the client's face, though, when uh, Ralph introduces me and uh, they kind of look at me quizzically as if to say, well, who are you and, and what are you doing here? And I uh, like to uh, tell them that I'm Ralph's carer, so I'm not really there to, to do anything other than just follow Ralph around, make sure he's okay and look after him. But, yeah. Make sure I don't eat too many biscuits. That's very true. The other one is is pretty much linked to retirement, but less happy for me. I call it death, and it's pretty much unrecoverable from. If they say, well, what happens if anything happened to you? Which is such a nice way of saying whatever happens if you die. <laughs> I just really point to Emma or 
if there are even existing clients who who notice that I'm getting older, I say, well, you've already met Emma. Emma would just take over and they all seem happy for that. Unfortunately, a bit too happy sometimes when Mm. I knock on the door on my own, allowed out, (laughs) and the first words out of their mouth is not, hello, Ralph, it's, oh, well, where's Emma? (laughs) So uh, She must be doing a very good job then. She is doing a very good (laughs) job, unfortunately. And another one, well, what happens if face-to-face finance goes bust? And that's quite understandable because people think that we're actually looking after their money, that we have super control over it. And and the fact is we don't. We actually don't touch client money. It, it never arrives in our bank account before it goes to an investment. It literally goes from their bank directly to their their investment and those investments are are, are regulated by the fca um just just as we are so um i always say well we wouldn't be very happy if uh, if we went bust but from your point of view on day one you would have a hundred percent of your money with us about and if we went bust on day two that money in total will still be there and with more modern products, they've got online access, so they can they can always uh, see them anytime they want. So they can still view it as if they would, you know, if it was like, you know, with a banking app or something like that, they can still physically see where their investment is and what it's invested in. Yes, yes, they, they, they can look at it. And, and again, that comes back down to, um, can I lose all my money? A lot of the time with a bank account, they can see it, they get a monthly statement or they can look online and, th- and that sort of thing. And with an investment, it's like they're giving the money away. And I always find it funny when people say, oh, can I have some money? And uh, I point out, actually, it is their money, but it, it's almost as though they've given it up and online access to, to the more modern products now gives them, you know, that that they they can see but unlike a bank account it's moving um up and down um all all the time every day and and it's amazing how many people start looking looking at it and then after a couple of weeks they're, they're not interested because they just see it going up and down and that there, there it is there yeah i mean i know when we've been out with clients who well, i've often had to ask about the eighty five thousand pound limit of having their money in one place as if that's all they can have i mean what would you say to someone who asked about that i think you should keep to the limits because you never know what's going to happen but from a from a going bust point of view of the banks and building societies i i really think that that governments can't allow that to happen now now i know in 2008 a couple of american banks went bust and 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 clients were were very concerned about them but they weren't normal banks you couldn't go in and open a a bank account yourself Uh, they were investment banks unfortunately they have the word bank so people automatically think oh I I haven't got it but I I remember when Northern Rock um, had problems and and people were queuing and, and I thought I don't understand why they're queuing because I'm in the industry and I know they don't have a pile of money. It's electronic. I must admit, when I worked at Norwich and Peterborough, I was very disappointed when I first started to not go out the back of the branch (laughs) and find a huge vault full of money. It was just a very small conservative save with enough money in to get by, but very disappointing all the same. I was disappointed when I broke into Norwich and Peterborough (laughs) and found that same safe and thought, no, no. I will have to continue as a financial advisor. <laughs> oh dear. Obviously, when clients ask you these questions, you, you find it quite amusing, obviously, as you've been asked them many, many a time now. But would you say they're important questions for clients to ask a new prospective ad- advisor, obviously, the, to see w- what their future succession plan and things are, just so that they would know what would happen with their advisor in the future? <laughs> Seriously, I think they are good questions. The first time you get asked, you think, oh, because we're in the industry. But when they're continually the same questions, that means it goes through everybody's uh, mind. So sometimes when someone says to me, 
you know, what happens when you retire, I roll out pretty much all those four questions for them, whether they want them or not, because I always feel then that maybe in the background they're thinking about it. But I always think if you're if you've never had a financial advisor and and you get one, they are questions that you should ask because A, you'll find if they do hold client money, because some of them do, we don't, but um, some of them do. And also about a succession plan, because you, you want to know someone's going to be there for you. And with the way we're doing it, they get a chance. It's almost, you know, try before you buy. And I think that's important. Well, uh, thank you, Ralph, for bringing to us those four questions that you often get asked. I'm uh, sure you'll be able to have a think about some other things for a podcast another day where you can uh, bring us some more whimsical things to tell us. Thank you very much for joining us and hope to have you back soon. Thank you. I will now try and find the door on the way out (laughs) single-handedly. Don't worry, as your carer, I will give assistance. If you've enjoyed listening today, why not head over and join our Facebook group, The Money Compass. And if you have any questions for myself, Lucas, or me, Emma, drop us a message in this group.